Hey everybody, it's Alan Hines up here in Laurel Canyon for today's um, pandemic project number 24 <laughs> and lick of the week, uh, whatever. Let's start with the lick. Um, there were two guitar players that were pretty influential to me um, when I was growing up. One was Ted Green and another guy was Lenny Bro. And although I never, you know, dove into them as deep as some other guitar players, they were you couldn't be a guitar player in the 70s and 80s and 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 not understand these guys were just incredible and there was you and for every reason you should check out both these guys both ted green and lenny bro they were superb musicians um but there was a kind of a trick and it wasn't really a trick because it was more musical than just being a trick but um one thing they used to do um with harmonics which i used to was always a nice treat and it was always made your ear perk up is that they would do these false, I guess they're called false harmonics, I'm not really sure, but um, uh, where they would take a pattern and I'm using, I'm taking away my pick and I'm um, I'm barring, on my left hand, I'm barring like over A minor seven, you know, with the, with the D in there too on the bottom. But um, the idea is I'm kind of in a pattern picking the D string, the E string, the um, G string, the A string, the B string, the D string, and then the E string and the G string is from going away. Which doesn't sound much like that when you just do the chord, but when you when you alternate it with octaves that you have to learn that's the tricky part really to learn how to do the to do harmonics with one hand like that instead of going, you know, you just do it with one hand. It takes a little getting used to, but you can do it. That's they would the alternate picking um, one of the notes and then playing a the harmonic. So I'm, I'm hitting the, the uh, D string, which is the G note, and then I'm playing an A, so you're getting two notes right next to each other, of course, through the harmonic. Right, you can hear that? Or a different chord. You want to use a chord that has more than one or two notes in it because you want to be able to get enough notes to make it the, give it that cascading effect. Now, there are guys who do this really well. Guys like Jamie Finley that comes to mind. Um, uh, Sid Jacobs, I've heard do this really more effectively than I could ever do it. Um, but what I found, I had, uh, I found a kind of a Homer Simpson uh, uh, simple way of doing and getting kind of the same, kind of the same effect. And that is, um, I would take the same chord. Uh, or the same shape, I guess, in the left hand, where I would bar down, and the, the secret here is to let every note kind of ring out, so you have to have some strength with your left hand. And then I would choose a scale. In this case, it's like C over A. Let's just do C major seven. But I'm gonna bar here, on like it looks like an A minor bar chord on the fifth fret, and I'm gonna kind of Running down the scale, but letting every note hold, not going. No, I'm letting them all ring as long as they can. Which is kind of a cool effect, but then you pick by the bridge. Now on my Telecaster, this might come out a little bit more because the Telecaster is single coil, it's a brighter guitar, and with that bridge, but I, because I wanted to show this project guitar to you afterwards, I'm gonna to try to do it on this guitar. But the idea is to, uh, in time or however you can fit into a song when you're going this is like D Dorian I'm going so it gives you kind of that same cascading effect without having to really do all the coordinated right hand stuff right um, you can throw it in anywhere those rings those notes ring like that it gives a nice little pad um, uh, and a nice little variety to uh, your uh, your average everyday um, uh, comping so that's the lick now the guitar as let's get to the guitar really quick this is actually I found this at uh, Ventura music in the valley my friend George has a store called Ventura music and it's a fun store, a lot of used stuff. George always has, there's a little diamond in the rough, all his 
looking in there someplace. And I looked over in the corner one time and saw this guitar. It was just brown wood, no finish, and it had this really great inlay. And the inlay is what caught my eye, of course. And looking at it closer, I realized that it was not cheap stick-on stuff. It was like really um, nicely detailed inlay, which is really beautiful. And that's, so I bought the guitar, I think for $100, maybe $200, I can't remember. It wasn't very much money. And it never had anything put into it. So I assume it must've been like an art project for somebody at some art school. So, uh, but I made it into uh, to, uh, an instrument, you know? I took it home and I put the electronics in it. They got these great pickups from Japan, uh, Grin and Dog pickups, which you can find on Facebook. They're my favorite humbuckers right now. They really sound great in this guitar. Um, I got some Goto tuning keys that fit and put these little ebony buttons on them, which I thought highlighted and kind of set off that little nice rose inlay. Um, I had, it had an ABR bridge, but I had it uh, replaced, had those dialed in. And then I had Pat Wilkins, who does great work in the Valley, refinish the top of it. And he got in all the little nooks and crannies and, and little crevices and detailed around the inlay beautifully. I don't know how he did that, but he did a great. And the back of it, I just painted myself. I mean, I just got some spray can, did that. Um, but the guitar came out great. Now it's a bit on the heavy side. It's, um, well, I've come to like heavy or light guitars. It really doesn't matter. They're all, you never know what you're gonna get. Some of the heavy ones sound great. Some of the light ones sound great. Some of the light ones sound terrible. Some of the heavy ones sound terrible. So I'm kind of used to it, but it's under 10 pounds. But I figure if a bass player can hold a bass all night, I can hold this guitar all night. So anyway, I put it together and it sounds wonderful. Now then, the only thing that was kind of holding me back from playing it more was that it felt really cheap in my hands. For some reason, the fretboard, I thought maybe the radius was too flat and I was scared of messing up with the frets because I didn't want to mess up the inlay on the fretboard. So I took it to Norik Renson, who's the guy who works on a lot of my guitars in the Valley, and he said that the problem was not in the radius on the top, but it was more um, on the shape of the neck. So what I did, I took, came home and took a sanding block and kind of sanded down this part of the neck, just the shoulders, not the middle section and not the outside section, but right in the middle there, kind of on these two edges, and kind of brought it down uh, spent about a half an hour on it and got a nice little soft V, painted it again, and this guitar plays, it plays like butter, it feels great. It feels like a pro, I have actually an old arch top from the 30s that has the same kind of soft V Gibson neck profile, which is really uh, comfortable. So this is my pandemic project number 24, let's call it, because the last one was 23, I don't know why I started there, but there's been many pandemic projects as we all probably have. But this is mine, a junk store fine, pretty much, I mean, a little, they were selling it as junk. It wasn't really much of anything. And I made it into a great instrument with good pickups, a little tender love and care. And I set it up right and got the neck playing right. And now I just got to find a matching jumpsuit that um, will go along with it. But I think it's beautiful. Uh, you know, by the way, I, if anybody knows what this is, let me know. I called Jay Terser because I know it's another company that does like these inlays, but they don't do anything this detailed. And this was not their guitar. Um, but it's really beautiful, and it's one of a kind, I guess, and it's mine, and it's my pandemic project number 24. And then you gotta lick for the day, too. Uh, try these Homer Simpson, uh, Ted Green, Ted, uh, Homer Simpson's version of Ted Green harmonics. Just for effect. Lots of fun. Okay, signing off from Laurel Canyon. It's Alan.